make sure you buckle your seatbelt for this one. And welcome. Do me a favor before you even get into the video. I want you to leave a like on this video, comment on this video, and then make sure you subscribe and share because we're trying to reach 2000 and we want the message of God to reach more people. So make sure to subscribe, do us a favor and leave a comment. I was on Instagram the other day and I saw this video and I wanted to share this video with you guys. I think this video carries so much wisdom and this video carries so much nugget and the spirit of God backs this video up. And I really wanted you guys to take a look at this video and take a look at this advice that a man who has been in ministry for 70 years, the advice that he gives to you and me as believers in Christ Jesus and everybody else that wants to go into ministry. Maybe you want to become a pastor one day, or maybe you want to be a traveling evangelist, or maybe you want to be a missionary, or maybe you want to do things in the kingdom, whatever it is. I believe that what this man had to say, this minister of God who has been in ministry for 70 years, that's more years than I've been alive. You know, the Bible says there is wisdom in the multitude of counselors. This is an opportunity for you to receive that wisdom. I want you to listen to this because what he says will eventually evolutionize your life. If you were to apply it, do me a favor. Don't just listen to this and let it go to one ear and come out the other. I really want you to listen to this with clarity and I want you to listen to this with an open heart. You've been in ministry 70 years. What would you say to the young R.T. Kendall? If you were to believe me, I'll be pleased, but you probably will say it's got to be more than that. But I'll tell you right now, I realize that I've got some degrees. But I would say to young ministers today, I would not recommend seminary. I think of Acts 4.13, when the Sadducees saw the boldness of Peter and John, they were amazed. Notice that they were uneducated, but they had been with Jesus. My advice to anybody, two things. Know your Bible and pray a lot. Yes. That's it. I know your Bible. What worries me, J. John, people don't know their Bibles. Yeah. Many preachers, the only time they read the Bible is when they want a sermon. And they don't know the Word. People don't know the Word. <laughs> if I had a legacy, my deepest desire is that I would have this legacy that people would start taking the Bible seriously. And when we pray, we get to know God's ways. Two things God wants us to know, His Word and His ways. His Word, the Bible. How do you get to know anybody's ways? By spending time with them. Louise knows my ways. My son, T.R., knows my ways. You know a little bit of my ways. How much do you pray? And so my Word, <laughs> I cannot emphasize this enough. I'm glad you asked. Know your Bible and pray a lot, and God will use you to exceed all the PhDs and seminary degrees. Know your Bible and pray a lot. You know, the Bible says in the book of John, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know what that tells me and you? That tells us that every time we read the book of Jesus Christ, every time we read the Bible, every time we open it, the Bible in and of itself is the Ruach. In other words, it's the breath of God. So whenever you read the Bible, you're receiving new life. You're, 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 you're renewing your mind daily, and you're feeding your spirit. And it's like the more you read it, the more the words become flesh. And if the Bible says, not if, because the Bible says that Jesus is the word and in the beginning was the word, the more you read the Bible, the more you get to know Jesus. You are reading Jesus. You are reading God the Father. You are reading God the Holy Spirit. So when he's telling us the most basic of all Christian principles, but yet the most important is, do you read your Bible? Do you meditate on the scripture? You know, it's it goes like this, right? Jesus Jesus tells us that if we seek him, we will find him, but we have to look for him. A lot of people who are in ministry, they don't know the word of God. They will go to other people for, for uh, inspiration. They would look at YouTube sermons of other preachers for inspiration. They will read books by different preachers and different men of God and women of
servant of God that have come before them to get inspiration. They would look at motivational teachers to get inspiration. And then they use a little bit of the scripture to, to make a message and they don't understand the word of God. When you read the word of God, re not only do you renew your mind, but you become closer to him. When you get closer to God, he shares his, his secrets with you. But when you are far from him, he can't really share his secrets with you. The only time that he will speak and share his secrets with you is when you're close enough for him to whisper in your ear. The word of the Lord says that the, the word of God is a lamp to our feet. You know what that means? Every time you meditate on the word, every time you read the word, it's like imagine holding a flashlight or imagine holding like a lamp wick. I'm talking about old school lamp, the one that you had to put oil in and then you had to put a wick in there and then you had to light it up. I'm talking about that. You had to hold it close. And if you want to see something, you got to bring it close to whatever you got to see. That's the word of God. It illuminates the more you read it and it makes a path for you to walk in listen to all of you out there who are christians to all of you out there who aspire to do big things and aspire to to preach aspire to travel aspire to lay hands on the sick aspire to prophesy all these things are amazing i love what he says and he talked about acts 4 13 if we are to read acts 4 13 i'm gonna read it in the nlt this is what it says the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. Hear that. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Hallelujah. So you know what that pretty much means? That means that Peter and that means that John had no seminary training. And some of us, we want to go to seminary. Is there anything wrong with seminary? No. He's basically saying that if you can spend time with God enough and you can go in the scriptures enough and you can meditate on the scriptures enough and you can grow with God enough in the place of prayer and in the place of meditation on his word, seminary, all the degrees of the world cannot equate to what you will receive just from spending time with God and reading the Bible. So I do wanna encourage you, get into a mentality of falling in love with the scriptures. It's not easy, but the moment you begin, it will be so sweet. You know, I remember in the book of Ezekiel where God called Ezekiel up and turned the prophetic word that he gave Ezekiel. He gave him the scrolls and he made him eat it. And as he Ezekiel ate the scrolls, it turned honey in his mouth. So I believe that as you read the word of God, it will turn sweet to every bitter circumstance and bitter situation. But this is a beautiful advice. Don't seek fame. Don't seek notoriety don't try to be like somebody else just grow in Christ seek him trust him read his word and meditate on his scriptures and pray and if you can do those two things read and pray you'll be successful let me know what you guys think in the comments make sure to like and subscribe God bless you guys I see you when I see you it's your boy Mercy in your heart. say what's up